Hey there, fellow classic comic collectors. As always, I'm Scott Harris King, and today I'm starting a new Complete Run Madness where I'm going to be showing off in installments over the next however long my Complete Run of Warlord. This actually isn't even an issue of Warlord, but my Complete Run of Warlord. So Warlord is one of my favorite series. I used to get made fun of back in the 90s when I first got into online fandom because I'd be talking about Warlord all the time and nobody else cared at all. And I was like, always wanted a big Warlord revival. And there have been a few. Uh, and so at the end, uh, when I get to the end of the original run, I do have um, some crossovers and guest appearances during the times where he hasn't had his own series. And I've got some of the later revivals. So I'm, I'm gonna show all of that eventually. Today we're going to start with issues 1 to 34, which is, I know it's kind of a random place to stop. I was originally going to do 1 to 50, but I've misplaced my issue 35. I definitely have it somewhere, um, but I had taken it out of my collection to show in a video that I was doing, and I don't know what I did with it after that. So it's in here somewhere in the room, in the wrong plot pile, misfiled somewhere. So... Um, until I find it, we won't be doing part two, but I wanted to at least do part one now. So we're going to do issues one to 34. Um, now, uh, as I mentioned before issues one to 34, there was this, the first appearance of Warlord, it's first issue special number eight. Now, um, as you know, from some of my previous videos, I have multiple copies of this. I have several copies, um, including a CGC 9.6 with an old label. Um, but this is like my copy. And it's a nice copy. It's probably a 5.5 or a 6. Um, it's structurally really nice, but it does have some, some rubbing and some stuff down here. So it's a nice copy. Uh, my copy is also signed down here by Mike Grell. Um, I've had a chance to meet Mike Grell a couple times. Um, the first time I didn't have access to my my warlord collection so i had him sign some other stuff but the second time um i did so i got some stuff signed including this copy of first issue special now warlord's really uh, important to me for a few reasons and one of the big ones is is one of the first comics i ever got now my first comic again as longtime viewers know is black hawk number 269 um, and I got 269, 270, and then I didn't get any comics for a while, um, just cause they didn't have an opportunity. And the next time that we were at a place where I could get some comics, um, I got two comics and one of them was Thor, I think 350, but it might've been 351. I'm not really sure. But the other one was uh, warlord number 90. So warlord is one of the first comics I ever read and a big, big warlord fan for a long time. Um, when I was... A couple years later, um, I've mentioned this a number of times, but I got a big collection. The guy that worked my dad had been collecting comics in the mid-70s, and he gave me his collection. And in his collection was First Issue Special, number 8, and Warlord, number 1, and number 2. And so here's the Warlord, number 1, that I got from my dad's co-worker, Greg, back in 1986. Um, might have been 87. You can see I've since had that also signed by Mike Grell. And it's a really nice copy. Um, it's probably a 7 or 7.5 7 maybe. Um, and I also got from Greg this. It's Warlord number 2. Um, I can't remember... If Warlord 1 or 2 is the first appearance of, uh, and I'm not even sure how to pronounce his name, Machist, M-A-C-H-I-S-T-E, Machist, Machist, no, I think it's Machist. Um, that's this guy here, and uh, he's an important supporting character in Warlord for starting right at the beginning and running through the rest of the series. And of course, these first few issues have like the start off the classic Warlord story where Warlord and Tara, the princess of Shambhala, uh, end up getting captured by the wizard, uh, evil wizard Demos. And um, he's forced to fight in the gladiator arena and he leads a rebellion like Spartacus. 
that runs through a number of these early issues. Um, but one thing that's interesting is that this, issue two, was the last issue of the series. Warlord was canceled after issue two. Um, you can see it uh, has the... I'm going to open this, actually, because I don't remember the year. I think it's 75. Um, it might be 76. Uh, it has the 70, 76. The cover date is March, April 1976. So that's issue two. So this would have been being made with a cover date of March, April 76. It was probably being made uh, right around the turn of the year, right? December 75. Um, probably when this is being worked on. Well, something else really important happened at that time. So right around the time this was getting canceled, uh, someone something else got canceled, and that was Carmen Infantino, who was the um, publisher at DC, the editor-in-chief. He got fired. They bring in Jeanette Kahn, and as part of her revamp of the series, she's doing a complete review of all of the titles and stuff, and... Uh, at some point, she looks through the sales figures and looks through the canceled titles and said, you know what, Warlord, that's something that maybe should, we should give a second chance. So she started the series up again. And so here we have issue three. You know, I have some really nice copies of both three and four um, and five, actually. Some of these early ones are actually quite nice of Warlord. And this is cover dated October, November 1976. So there was a several months um, gap in between. There's like a seven month gap between issues two and three where it got canceled and then uncanceled. Now, all these early issues are written and drawn by Mike Grell and they all have these great covers. For me, Warlord consistently has some of the best covers in comics, like just some great, great, great um, cover art. Um, I happen to have a really, really nice high-grade copy of issue four. And you can see Demos, his arch enemy here. He's got Terra. You know, there's a lot of sword and sorcery books that were put out in the 70s trying to capitalize on the success of Conan, and almost all of them are flops, but not, not Warlord. Here we are, issue five. Only the Warlord's slashing sword will unlock the secret of Skartaris. Issue six. Now they start to get a little bit more beat up. Can the warlord rejoin the woman he loves or will his own people execute him as a traitorous spy? So here's a story where a warlord, um, it's been a long time since I've read it, but I believe this is where he, first time he tries to go back to earth, right? Because in, in his first appearance, it's very um, Edgar Rice Burroughs, like John Carter sort of thing. He, he falls through this portal to this, other world, Skartaris, which he believes is, you know, it's like Journey to the Center of the Earth. It's in this, like, place under the Earth's surface. Um, uh, but there's portals to get back to Earth, right? Back to, to our world. And um, I think this is the first one, but it's important because it's the first appearance of Mariah. So here's Mariah. You can see her here. And she's like a Russian scientist. Um, and she ends up being stuck in Skartaris as well. And so uh, you can see here she is in her uh, Skartaris costume, which is considerably skimpier. But to be fair, all of the people on Skartaris wear almost nothing. Um, now, uh, so she's not alone in that. Um, this is, of course, Mike Grell, who famously did some of the skimpiest uh, costumes for both men and women in Legion of Superheroes um, just before this. So here's issue seven. Why does his friend greet him with death? So here's the return of Matt Chist, and he's got this magic axe that's cursed him, and so it's it's like possessed him. And so th and this is important for Warlord lore because this is an issue where Matt Chist loses his hand. Um, he basically... Uh, Warlord Travis Morgan, I, if I remember correctly, he has to cut his hand off to free him from the possessed axe. It's also where Matt Chist and Mariah meet, and they end up having a relationship starting in this issue. And then we have issue eight. And you can see here where Warlord really, um, it's a f epic fantasy, but there's a lot of sci-fi elements as well. So the idea is that in this world, and I'm going to talk about more about this later when we get to issue 27, um, 
basically the survivors of Atlantis fled through a portal to Scar Taurus and they have all this advanced technology, but that was a long time ago. So now it's like a fantasy uh, world with magic and swords and stuff like that, but there's still robots and all this ancient advanced technology on this world, right? Um, and of course, one of the things the advantages Warlord has is, is that he has a gun. So he has a gun in a world where nobody else has guns, except, of course, when they run into robots. Um, so there's issue eight. Issue nine. I don't know which hell pit you crawled out of, monster, but you won't kill the Warlord without a fight. So here's, here's an interesting transition um, where we see that... Uh, warlord his costume has been all ripped apart so he's been wearing this costume this like black um outfit since his first appearance here it's all shredded and that's the last time we're going to see that because then he gets his classic costume which is almost nothing <laughs> so he's got the loincloth which you can't really see very well here he's got the um the fur booties uh, and he's got a chain across his chest and he's got like a saber tooth skull sort of thing over one shoulder. And that's basically it. Um, except he also has this winged helmet. So this is the classic warlord costume. So here's issue 11. If I remember right, it's been a long time since I've read some of these. But this is a, a like a retelling of his origin. So at this point, we're up to March... Um, uh, probably 78. Um, the book is still bi-monthly at this point. Um, it's only been three years since his first appearance, or two, two and a half years. Um, math, math, math. Yeah, about two and a half, between two and a half and three years since his first appearance. But they're doing a, a retelling of his origin here. Um, issue 12. There's a lot of dinosaurs here. We saw that in his first appearance. We see Warlord again. This is his classic, classic cover uh, uh, costume, I mean. Um, and here's Mariah again. 13. Here's a classic Grell cover. You know, it, it's very, um, very John Sable. Here's a great Grell cover, number 14, where death intervenes it's like a dream sequence or, or i forget you know whatever it doesn't matter okay here's where things get here's where we start picking up a new plot so um previously they've escaped from demos and there was a rebellion and basically uh tara was able to regain the throne of shambhala and here in issue 15 um is starts a storyline where demos uh tara's had a baby while uh Travis is off gallivanting around. There's a lot of this in this series. There's a lot of like, um, she's ruling the kingdom. He gets bored. He goes off on a bunch of adventures. He's come back and a bunch of stuff has happened uh, because time tra like time travels differently in, it passes differently in uh, Scartaris. So it might be uh, like a couple days for you, but a month for this person. And so he leaves for a while. He comes back. She's had a baby. Um, he's like, oh, okay. Um, and in this issue, Demos, their, the, his arch enemy, um, kidnaps their baby. And so that, that storyline goes through the next several issues. Here's issue 16. Grell's covers are just great on all these. He's got the baby. Um, and so he's on this big quest to get the baby back. And that runs through several of these, all of these issues, really. 18 19 now starting with this issue this is actually a pretty nice copy i haven't been taking as good a care of these as i should so some of them are actually getting a little bit bent from not having the backing boards i'm going to address that later uh once i put these away um great black cover um, this is the first monthly issue. Um, we've just got, we've got the new, the all new DC. 
uh, Warlord su survived the DC implosion um, and is selling well enough now that it's moved from bi-monthly to monthly. Issue 20, we got another crystal ball cover. Um, once in a while, you'll see Warlord with a shield. Um, and he's got Terra and Mariah who don't really get along. Terra doesn't get along with any of the other women that Warlord likes to hang out with. Um, Demos. Uh, and then here's a vitally important uh, story. It's issue 21. So what happens is uh, Demos uses ancient Atlantean technology to clone the baby and then uh, he uses another machine to age the clone up to adulthood. And so um, Warlord doesn't know it's a clone um, and they have a fight. And in, basically in self-defense, he ends up killing the clone of his son who he thinks is his son. Um, and so he becomes quite tortured by this and again leaves Terra, uh, which is great because she's mourning you know, the death of her son. And uh, Travis immediately leaves. Because he's, you know, wrought with guilt. So he's like, well, you just deal with that by yourself. I'm going to run off and have some adventures and, f and fight it out. Um, Demo seemingly dies in the issue 21. Also important because he's going to be brought back to life multiple times. But this whole thing here. So that that's the main story from issues 15 to 21. And that's the, that's the Joshua death of Warlord's son sort of thing. And death of Demos. That's going to be the main subplot for the rest of existence because this storyline, which again started uh, in the late 70s, does not get resolved until 2010. Um, and it's not like they, it's not like one of these things where it's set up here and then people forget about it. And then later on, like decades later, someone ties up a loose end. This is an ongoing subplot that continues to be in the, the series for the next 30 plus years until it's finally resolved uh, at the end of the last video I'll do here because that's the end of Warlord basically. Um, so uh, Travis Morgan goes on his um, uh, just going around fighting monsters to sort of bury, uh, drown his guilt. He's got a little bit of a death wish. Um, Uh, 24, here's a great cover, underwater cover. 25. 26, a classic growl, because he does a lot of these. He'll have this, he likes to do the circles, the design elements. There's some great ones later on. All right, I had to switch camera angles here. Okay, 27, I've mentioned this. I did a whole video, I think, on this, but I mentioned earlier in the video. Again, absolutely great cover. And this is the origin of Atlantis. Um, I've mentioned this in the context of, I, th I still think that uh, we're going to be seeing Warlord and Skartaris in Aquaman 2. Because um, a lot of stuff in the first movie sets up Skartaris. Great, great cover. Um, 28, Grell, drawing his fantasy women, I'm trying to get this with no glare, here we go. He does just some great covers here. The Curse of the Cobra Queen. 29, Grell was a little bit ahead of his time in terms of cover design in that it's a very modern thing to just have the character um, posing on the cover that, you know, that's basically every issue of, you know, Marvel for the last 10 years is just them on the cover. Um, but Grell used to do this pretty regularly and just had some great covers. Like there's fundamentally not a lot of difference between the cover for issue 29 And the next issue, 30, although I think 30 is more dynamic because it has, you know, all the weapons pointed at him. Gr 
great. I love yellow covers. Great cover here. Oh, and let me rewind a little. 30. Uh, we pick up the Joshua subplot. Basically, the baby Joshua, who's still alive, um, has had been taken in by, like, a guy and his wife, a lumberjack or something. Just like, you know, a guy. Um, but then there's, like, an invasion uh, and the army comes through and um, th that guy's killed. And so I don't remember what happens to Joshua here, but um, but it's that subplot is continuing. Thirty two, very important. First of all, another great cover, Land of the Titans. Uh, so this woman here, I think this is her first appearance. It's Shakira. Uh, and as you can see, her hips do not, in fact, lie. Uh, but Shakira is going to become a, a major character starting here and running for the rest of the series. Um, because Shakira is a woman who can um, shapeshift into a cat. And she uh, is basically going to be um, Warlord's, like, sidekick's not the right word, but sort of adventuring partner for the rest of the series. Um, and she and Tara, in particular, don't get along very well. Um, and so, like, whenever Warlord is off on, when he's not at home doing whatever in um, Shambhala, when he's out on his adventures... Uh, Shakir is always with him, and so the two of them go on these adventures together. Um, here's 33, where he's got his gun. And then 34, where he gets his magic sword. So he's just, I think, up into this... I, I forget, forget how long he's had the magic sword. It's been a long time since I've read some of these but i think he gets it here so you can see back in this issue he's just got you know a cool sword but now he gets a magic sword um but it's eventually we're, it's going to turn out that like there's this gem gives it superpowers and stuff but it's cursed and so you can't use the sword without like um becoming like more and more crazy and so he eventually has to destroy the sword like get rid of the sword but it comes back a lot later in one of the annuals and stuff like that this is a really nice uh high grade copy great black cover um and so that's it for this time so that's up to issue 34 so warlord kicking butt taking names and we're almost to where i think the series really gets good um it, not that these aren't good they are good but they're they're mostly episodic with some subplots um but starting right after this he really starts building a, a bigger narrative um, where you have ongoing, multiple ongoing subplots and longer storylines. And, and the series really takes off for me. Um, it hits its like high points shortly after this. So we'll talk about in the next video once I find issue 35. Um, but that's it for now. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. And I'll see you next time.